This is the story of Alara, a Cinderella story from the graphic novel The Magic Fish. Once upon a time, a merchant and his wife lived in a little house on a hill by the sea. While the merchant was away, his wife tended to a peach grove with her sister, Velvet. Eventually, they had a beautiful daughter. What should we name her? She will be called Alara. One day, his wife looked out to the sea, stepped into the water, and never returned. Little Alara was left in the care of her aunt, who raised her. Auntie, where is my mother? Where did she go? Your mother is a sea princess. Your father broke a very important promise to her, and so she had to return to the ocean. While her father spent his days at sea, searching in vain for his wife. As Alara grew, so too did her father's lingering resentment of her. Alara? You look more and more like her every day. Alara, my girl, you promised to help me make those peach tarts. The flour won't sift itself. Come along. Please excuse us. Alara learned to tend to the peaches, as her mother had, and her aunt taught her everything she wished to know, for her aunt knew many secret things. Auntie, what was my mother like? She liked to tend to the grove and look out over the ocean. Do you think she misses me? I know she does. This sounds so familiar. That's a beautiful melody. What is it? This ring? It's a marvelous little treasure from a land of mist. It can't stand to be apart from its bearer. The ring will sing to her if it senses her nearby. Velvet could spin starlight into spools of slim, shimmering thread and weave a summer breeze into a warm shawl. She proved herself an invaluable member of the household, for she knew, by some magic, the language of the birds and the beasts. It was in this way that she remained by her niece's side long after the girl's mother departed. And this was how the birds and the fish told her the old man of the sea was on his way to see the merchant. On the eve of Alara's 17th birthday, a little fish whispered news of the ocean to her aunt. Did you hear? Did you hear? What news do you bring? The merchant has debts to the ocean he cannot pay. The king of the mist comes to collect. He will have the merchant's firstborn, or else he will eat the merchant. Then I suppose the, he must eat the merchant. He cannot have the girl. The merchant trades in value, does he not? He is known to be as fickle as fortune himself, herself. When the price was for his happiness, he consented to all its conditions. Now the king comes to collect, and you know he does not care for Alara. What is that? I brought you a princess from the sea, and you vowed to love her for all your days, didn't you? I did, but she she's gone. I owe you nothing. Your promise to her has nothing to do with your contract with me. She agreed to be your wife unless she agreed to be yours unless you struck her thrice. Once was an accident, twice was a mistake, a third time and you've lost her forever. That was the vow. Your contract with her is broken. Your contract with me remains and now I've come to collect. You're firstborn for my bride or your soul. No, as you consented in word and blood. Oh, bride, I can see you there. Come here. Have courage. We'll get through this. What is this about a bride? Nuptials are so exciting. It occurs to me that marriage is a contract, isn't it? You. This man is bound by his own blood to your contract with him has nothing to do with your contract with her. Fine. What then are her terms? She'll need something to wear for the wedding, of course. Dresses? Ha! Predictable. 
Yes, dresses, three of them. I want three magnificent dresses. The first dress must be made from the essence of the dawn itself, as dazzling as the morning. The second must be made from the evening, as beautiful as moonlight and dark as sable. The third dress must be made of glimmering starlight, gathered from a clear night sky. I will consider your offer only after you present those to me. Those are my terms. I accept. The next day, the light of dawn was a little less brilliant, and Velvet knew the old man had taken the, its glamour for the first dress. The following evening, the moon went missing from the sky, and she knew the old man had stolen it from the night. And at the end of the third day, the stars shone dull and cold, and she knew the old man had siphoned the glimmer of starlight from the heavens. He succeeded, hasn't he? What is he, auntie? He is the old man of the sea, Alara's aunt explained. He's the grandfather of the ocean, and he is older than any of us could dream. Alara, hold out your hand, darling. This little walnut can carry more than you might imagine. Hold it up and will the dresses inside. All right. They're all in the shell. Put this on. It's an enchanted coat of many furs. It will grant you safe passage through the woods. Follow the sunset. Auntie? And one last thing. The ring, too? It belonged to your mother, and it's possessed by a lyrical spirit of longing. She passed it on to me until the day I would return to her, and now I pass it on to you. It will always find its way back to you. Don't forget me.